Hi guys, and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well, we've got a little hover effect for you today. We've got an icon here with a title. When you hover over the icon, it's going to morph into some text or fade into some text, however you want to describe it. Really nice little effect that's going to get eyeballs on this particular area pretty quickly when people mouse over that. And of course on a tablet or a cell phone they can just tap on it it'll do the same thing really easy to do we've got to write a little bit of css code for this today but any code i write i'll put below the video and you're welcome to use it okay let's get started i'm going to enable the visual builder once enabled let's go down and just get rid of one of these modules here i guess we'll start on this one i'm going to trash that i've got a section here the blue tab with a row, the green tab, and inside I've got three columns. And we're using blurb modules for this today. So let's add a new blurb module. Divi comes as standard with all these modules. Plenty enough to build just about any site. When you add WooCommerce, you get an extra dozen as well. But today we're using the blurb module right here. So I'm going to left click and pop that one in. OK. Well, obviously put your title here. I'm not going to put any titles or anything in here because I really got nothing to say. Put your content in here. Obviously, it's like any other text module. You can align it, bold it, italicize it, add links, do what you need to do, add media if you want to. I'm going to go straight down and I'm going to add my image and icon. Next tab just below. I'm going to flip the little switch to use icon. Of course, you can use an image and do it the same way if you want to. Choose whatever icon it is you want to use. And there's plenty to choose from here from Elegance Themes Library. There it is right there. Great. If you want to link your module to somewhere, or the title, put the title link in there, module link in there. You can have two different links if you want to. Obviously, put your link where you need to. Best practice, if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking to somebody else's site, open it in a new tab so your site stays open. I'm not going to use a background in this today. I'm just going to use a plain page background we've got going on there. All right, well, let's go in to design, image and icon. Let's make it the color we want. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go down, use icon font size. And let's slide it up. When it goes to about 120, I want mine to be about 175. So I'm going to just type in the values. You can type in whatever value you want. That's great. And let's just close up our icon for a moment. We'll be coming back in here in a minute and to do some hover effects. I'm going to go down the text and pop everything into the middle. Let's go to the title text itself. And you can either go down title text and find the H value that you want or you can click on the little blue paintbrush there it'll take you straight to it an H4 I'm going to make that blue let's make it semi bold and capitalize it I'm going to take it up a little bit in size not a whole lot title text size 18 there you go make it whatever size you need to make yours Okay, now we need to position it. What we want to do is we want to push this icon down so it's on top of our image here and then pull our content up or on top of our content here, I should say, and then pull the content up so that our icon's sitting below like this one next door. So this is where the custom CSS comes into play. Let's go over to our advanced tab, go down to custom CSS got before you've got main element you've got after you've got blurb image if you've uploaded an image that'll work for the image but it's also going to work for the blurb icon itself so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push that icon down a little ways maybe 100 picks so let's do margin top and like I said I'll put this below the video you don't have to try copying it while I'm doing it real time you're welcome to use it as you wish 100 picks should do it yeah, that's fine. Great. Well, we've got that where we want it now, our icon. But we need to pull this up here somewhere. 
So if we go down a little bit, we've got a blurb title. So let's give it a negative margin on the top. Margin top, colon, negative. Let's say try 275. I think that's what I used before. And as you can see, that's popped that way up there, which is great. Now what I need to do is just align it so this title comes down a bit. Okay, so let's put a little semicolon there in case we want to add some more code later. And let's go down to our design now. We'll go back into our title again. I'm going to hit that little paintbrush. And I'm going to up the line height, which will give it more space top and bottom, bring it down. It'll also bring our content down over the top of our blurb item there. So I'm going to roll down a bit to line height. There it is. Probably going to bring it up to about three all the way. There we go. Just like that. Okay, now we've got to do the actual appearing and disappearing thing. And this is really easy because we can do it with colors, basically. So if we go into our text, and again, I can hover over the paintbrush for the text right there. Body text. Body text color. What I'm going to do is hover over the dark writing where it says body text color there. Get the little arrow going. On desktop, we don't want to see it at all. Desktop's when you're not hovering over it. Hover obviously is when your mouse is hovering over it. For desktop, I want it to be totally transparent so we can't see it. So I'm going to hit transparent and it's gone. Then when we hover over it, we want it to have a color. I'm going to start off with black. Perhaps not quite as black as that. Let's just take it down a little bit so it's just dark gray, something like that. Whatever color suits you. Now we need to do exactly the same thing with the icon. So we can close that down, go to the image and icon, or we can go over here and hit the little paintbrush there. It'll take you to the icon. And we want to do the opposite for this. Again, I'm going to hover up over icon color, get the little icons up there, hit the little arrow. For desktop state, that's all we want to see. So that's perfect. For hover state, don't want to see that icon at all. So I'm going to make it transparent. Now, if you wanted to, of course, let's put that back to how it was. You could make it so you could just see it vaguely in the background by giving it whatever color you want and taking the opacity down. Opacity is sort of transparency or see-throughness. So if you want a, like a little watermark or something in the background, you could do that. But I'm actually going to take mine down to transparent because I don't want to see it at all. So I'm just clicking back on the arrow and hitting the little transparent one there. Great. Now the time it actually takes for the text to fade out and the icon to fade in or vice versa, by default 300 milliseconds with the Divi theme. So if we go to the advance, down the transitions, I like to slow this down just for a bit of drama. I think it just looks better, but that's entirely up to you. I'm going to drag this up to about a second or a thousand milliseconds. Don't want any delay, want it to happen as soon as their mouse hits it. And my favorite speed curve for this is ease in and ease out check them out they're all slightly different some will work better than others in certain situations but ease in and ease out is my go-to for these horror effects great so if we've done everything correctly we should be good to go save our changes save the page changes and we'll exit the visual builder And there we go, there's our little blurb modules with icons. When we hover over them, it's going to pop up with the text. If you wanted to move that text further down over it, you could just put a space right there above the yaw to do that. Save writing any more CSS. And that's a nice little feature. Really easy to do, as you can see. Like I say, I'll put that CSS code that I wrote down below, nothing to it and you're welcome to use it how you wish. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.